Guys, I have to fess up to you, all right? I've got to be honest. I messed up last week. I am a man. What? How do I want to say this? I am a man of great dignity, okay? I am somebody you can trust, as all K-State fans are, as you saw by the Taco Bell beefy five-layer burrito guy on the internet this weekend. We are men of our word. I, when I'm right, I'm going to come here and tell you when I'm right. When I'm wrong, I have no problem coming and telling you that I am wrong. So let's go look at this really bad take now in hindsight that I put out there last week. Did not age well. Uh, I specifically spoke about it here on the show. A harsh reality for the Big 12 right now is that Utah looks like the class of the league, even without Cam Rising. A lot can change the rest of the year, but it's not a good look. Well, what's not a good look is this tweet now one week later. We're always doing a snapshot in time on this show, right? So maybe by the end of the year, things will turn back around. Everybody else will have three losses. Utah will rip through the rest of the schedule unbeaten with Isaac Wilson. You know, there's still a world where this could come back around. But right now, at this snapshot in time, it does not look very good. So I've got to fess up to you guys on that. I messed up and the big 12 is much more wide open than I believed it to be a week ago when I still thought pretty highly of Oklahoma state, pretty highly of going into Stillwater and knocking the Cowboys around, sucking the life out of that place. Like Utah was able to do with Isaac Wilson last week. Looks different now, feels different. And I just saw Utah get kind of manhandled physically by Arizona. Utah fans will not like to hear that, but they got, out toughed at home. They got pushed around by Arizona, a team that, look, I will admit, after watching them in Manhattan, I thought Arizona was kind of soft. I thought Arizona was kind of soft, but they proved me the hell wrong at Rice Eccles on Saturday night, man. They ran the ball, and they got after it on the defensive line as well. Like, Arizona impressed the hell out of me with what they did against Utah. And now that makes it seem like Utah is very much just in that same category of, Hey, we've got five, six, seven, maybe eight teams that are all kind of lurking here with major flaws, but that can also produce really great games. And it's very tough to predict where that is going to go. So the narrative that Utah is a step above everybody so established that they can just plug this guy in and go and win in the toughest environment no, nope, we have new data that's been revealed to us this week, and it looks like this league is is much, much, much more wide open. Uh, I mean, you know, especially when you combine it with, again, we already talked about the Cam Rising aspect of this, but we don't know what's going on there. And if you are confident that you're going to see a healthy Cam Rising playing and playing soon, I've got a timeshare to sell you. You know, uh, maybe he will, but I do not think that's wise to assume based on the entire history of all this. So it very much brings Utah back to the rest of the pack. Iowa State, you know, in some ways by default, maybe has to go up to number one in the power rankings. But I, you know, I say that as a guy who watched a lot of that game against Houston and their offense made some plays at the very end, but they were not doing much. And if Houston had any semblance of an offense, which – Boy, I mean, I love Willie Fritz. I think he's going to get it turned around, but they they have nothing offensively right now. Um, if they had any semblance of an offense, Iowa State would have been in some real trouble. I, all of these schools have potential fatal flaws, and they all have enough good in them that it's just a jumbled up mess. And it is quite literally right now exactly what people anticipated at the beginning of the year. Because remember, at the beginning of the year, not just the national narrative, right? Like Josh Pate said, the Big 12 is America's conference. And a lot of what he's referencing there is just like, hey, if you want like really fun football, a fun brand of football that's unpredictable like every single week, and you know, you, you're know, you going to find it in the Big 12, everybody thought that the appeal of this conference will be that it's unpredictable and fun and there won't be anybody running away from it. And even those of us within the league that are talking about the league on a regular basis and care about the league, we all said like, Hey, well, here's like eight teams that could legitimately win the league, eight teams that feel like contenders. 
And now we sit here at the end of September, heading into the first wave of games that'll be in October next week. It's exactly what we have. Maybe not quite the lists that we thought we would have had going into the season. I guess really the one shift there would be what you go Kansas swapped out, Colorado swapped in now, probably on that list, or BYU swapped in for a, I don't know if you had TCU in there. I would still probably keep UCF on my list uh, for right now, but it's like Kansas out, BYU, Colorado in, and bam, you've got pretty much the same list as what you would have had in the off season. So like if I asked you, who's your big 12 championship game right now? I don't think there's a wrong answer. You know, I asked everybody on Twitter earlier today for your big 12 hot takes heading into uh, week six or post week five, big 12 hot takes. There's stuff all over the board and I really can't scoff at much of it. You know, um, I saw like Zach, for instance, right before I hopped on here at Oklahoma state fan said Colorado will play in Arlington. I'm like, I don't know how hot that really is anymore. It would have sounded scorching to me last week, but Colorado is getting better and they're getting better in the areas that are the real problem areas for them. And that's why they just like wire to wire looked like the much better team at UCF and beat them by four touchdowns. Like it's, it's impressive. So you've got to bow down and respect them a little bit right now. I don't know who I, if you ask me to pick the big 12 championship game right now, like, Dude, I don't know. I don't have a dartboard in here, but just let me close my eyes and throw a couple. And I live with that. I I don't, I don't know. Uh, I think my contenders at this point, BYU, Iowa state, Utah, Arizona, K state, Colorado, UCF. So what have I named off there? That's seven, maybe Texas tech, maybe Texas tech. Um, you know, winner of Texas Tech Cincinnati. I think it's fair to at least put there like on the fringes of it. Uh, that was a good game. Texas Tech's defense, I still has a lot of work uh to go, but hey, if they didn't have a pick six of Brendan Sorsby, they're probably losing that game. So they did make a nice play there, too. I don't know who the favorite is, man. And I guess I should amend my statement. The only way you have a wrong answer on that is if you pick Kansas or Houston. Kansas and Houston, they are definitely out of that picture. Almost anybody else, maybe Baylor, but you know, Baylor, Baylor has been very competitive, had the ball with a chance against BYU on Saturday after just a dreadful start. And obviously like they should have beaten Colorado, absolutely should have beaten Colorado, but we got a wild finish there, which is what everybody expected from the big 12, right? So what everybody expected out of the league, wild zany conference, unpredictable. We got it with Colorado beating Baylor. And now Colorado is on the move. And uh, we have had a team like Kansas drop four straight, but here comes BYU off to a five and zero start out of nowhere. that you didn't really expect it all. It's living up to its name. The problem is, That's bringing the anti-Big 12 sentiment out. And I do want to hone in on more of that and show you guys what I'm seeing. And, uh, you know, it's it's disappointing. It's it's definitely disappointing. But um, for now, we have a lot of Super Chats here. I appreciate all of you guys weighing in. So I am going to hop through those. We'll start with Matthew. I appreciate you, Matthew. And if you want to uh, join the parade of Super Chats here, you can do so by clicking the dollar sign below the chat box. Great way to support the channel. It will guarantee that your question or comment makes it on the show tonight. I appreciate all of you who do that. Uh, Totally free way to support what I'm doing. If you're a Big 12 fan, make sure that you subscribe to the Open for Business newsletter, ofbnews.com to do that. If you don't want to filter through Big Ten or SEC news to get your Big 12 news, if you don't want to filter through Big Ten or SEC bias to get your Big 12 news, sign up. You get Big 12 news straight to your inbox two or three times per week. You got it three times last week. OFBnews.com is where you can do that. 